Hello and welcome to Let's Talk with Bishop R.C. Blakes. R.C. is an author, empowerment teacher, and the proud pastor of the New Home Ministries of New Orleans, Louisiana, and Houston, Texas. His message circles the globe. His conversational and candid approach to challenging content makes him a relevant voice to all generations. Get ready for a life-changing transformational conversation. Hello, 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 hello. This is R.C. Blakes, and I am so excited about being able to share with you once again today. Now, I need you to do me a favor. Would you invite some others to come in and to be a part of this conversation? Because we, this is really tonight or today, whenever you may be watching this, this is truly a father-daughter talk in the classical sense. You know, the first, it's over there, the first book I wrote to towards the empowerment of women was the father-daughter talk. And it is the foundation of queenology and everything else that we're doing um, around the world. And it speaks to God's call and the mission that God gave to me, to Lisa and I, you know, when you, when you come into my content, I need you to understand that God assigned me, God gave me the assignment to speak to this generation of women like a father would to his daughters or a big brother to his sisters or an uncle would to his nieces or a pastor would to his spiritual daughters. And so when you come here, that's why you hear me mostly dealing with uh, issues relative to women. Now, I do speak to the empowerment of men. I've written a book, Kingology. Uh, very soon, we're going to have the online program up for men, and I will continue to do conferences and what have you. But I, I know my specific assignment. The world would call it my niche but it's really more than a niche. It's not something that I chose. It's something that chose me. And that is God assigned me to speak as a father to this generation of women, misguided generation of women, intentionally misguided. And I call that, um, I call that broken consciousness, female slave conditioning, where the society, the culture intentionally diminishes the uh, the woman's self-perspective and, and the woman's um, self-evaluation to a point that society may manipulate her. We often use the illustration of a authentic Chanel bag being sold on a Walmart shelf because why would it be sold on a Walmart shelf? It does not know its value. And so that's what we're dealing with when we look at this generation of women and so I have another one today that uh, is definitely a father-daughter talk. I want to talk about uh, 10 red flags, well, maybe 11 actually, red flags that you may be dealing with a down-low man. I'm seeing, I'm hearing from so many of uh, the sisters, the women, that they thought they had a pure heterosexual man. They thought they had a husband, you know, in the, in the classical biblical sense, only to discover that the man is cheating on her with another man or with men. This is, uh, let's get some definition. In urban slang and American culture, a down low man typically refers to a man who identifies as heterosexual. That's his public identification. Or presents himself as such publicly, but secretly engages in sexual relationships or encounters with other men often without the knowledge of his family, friends, or regular sexual partners. 
The term originated within the African-American and Latino communities where societal pressures and cultural norms may discourage open or public expressions of homosexuality. Now, it says the term originated. It's not saying that the practice is exclusive to African-American and Latino communities because this is true in white communities as well. It's frowned on more in African-American or Latino communities. But this is a phenomenon that um, spills over into every culture, every, you know, I think it's more pronounced in the United States of America, probably in Europe, than in other parts of the world. Um, but these down, now let me say this before I get started. You already know how I feel, what my thoughts are about human sexuality. I'm a biblical man. I believe it's a man and a woman. I believe it's one man, one woman, you know, wife for life. I believe all that. But I'm not here to bash you if your choice is to, to be a homosexual or some say it's not a choice or if that's your inclination, you know, um, I'm not here to argue that. You know, if, you, if if it's your thing to be homosexual, I can't do nothing about that. I'm not going to have to answer for your sexuality. And I'm not going to bash your sexuality. I'm not going to make a full-time job, as some preachers do, of preaching about what I think about your sexuality. I have enough to do to take care of me and Lisa Blake's sexuality over here at our house. But one thing I am going to speak against is a man that portrays himself to be a heterosexual man when you know you are whole homosexual. Why would you jump over into a heterosexual pool when you know you are whole homosexual? Why would you mislead and misguide gullible women when you know you're a whole homosexual, I have a problem with that. That, in my opinion, the only things that are worse than that would be rape, um, child molestation, uh, you know, those things probably are worse. Well, definitely are worse. But when you're a man and you, 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 painting yourself to be, are you a homosexual man? And you're painting yourself to be a heterosexual man? And you out here dating women and, and you know, talking all this stuff like, like, like you really want to be a husband? You really want a wife? You messing with the minds of these women? You taking these heterosexual women off of the market from real heterosexual men? You destroying the self esteem of these women. You know what I mean. You, you you you. I have a problem with that. Now you want to be homosexual? Hey, yeah, I got homosexuals in my family. They know how I feel about it, but you know, got them in my church. They know how I feel about it. I'm I'm a Bible man, but I ain't judging you. You gonna have to answer to God for yourself. You have to. Live. I'm not getting into bed with you, and you ain't getting into bed with me. You know. But when it comes down to you perpetrating a lie, I have to speak against it. And there are too many ladies that are taken in by these homosexual men. They say, well, bisexual, you know, I don't believe in that either, honestly. I think, you know, any man that can get in the bed with a man is a homosexual. He's a homosexual that, that will sleep with a woman for whatever reason. That's my opinion. Now, I know y'all. a lot of y'all don't agree with it, and that's cool. I ain't right about everything, but I'm right about that. You know, if you can get up in the bed with another man, you're homosexual. You can dress it up to my bisexual and all that. No, bro, you're a homosexual that, that will sleep with women for whatever reason. Money, social status, rising up in the ranks in corporate America, Rising up in the ranks in ministry, because y'all all through the pulpit too. Y'all got so many little homosexual preachers up in these churches. 
or with these little fake wives. These little women don't even realize they fake wives, and they got this little little entourage to my they armor bearers. They bearing more than arms. A little gang, a little gang of homosexuals running around the country together, screaming and hollering and dancing with all these little tight pants on. You know, come on now. This is happening in the church. I can talk about that because I'm from the church. This is happening in the church. And I don't I can't understand how you women don't see that these boys are homosexuals. And I don't see how you preachers let these boys up in your church in these pulpits with all of this perversion. These boys are homosexuals and they're flying around the country together in little bands. Come on now. Holding one another like they're in the spirit. Don't no man, don't no man hold no man like that. Not not no, not no, not no normal heterosexual man. You ain't hold don't hold me when I'm in the presence of God. If you feel like I, I don't need you holding me. I don't want nobody holding me like that but my wife. I ain't want another woman holding me like I see some of you boys holding. Okay, let me leave that alone. Whew, calm down. Calm down. Second Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 and 2 says, This know also. That in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves. I've never seen a day where men just love themselves and one another. There's, there's this infatuation among so-called men with masculinity, men loving men. They say men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. And this is the day that we're living in. You know, this is the day that we're living in. Uh, homosexuality has gotten to a point now where in the church, in, in, in corporate America, um, in entertainment, it's almost, it's almost a plus for you to be... Um, to be gay now. It's it's abnormal to be straight. Right? A little while we're gonna have to be marching for straight rights. Um, but my point is this: a lot of times you have guys that want to rise up in the ranks, and because the, the power players many times, um, because the power players are are more uh, sensitized to the gay community, you have gay guys that want to rise up in the ranks in certain spheres, but then socially they want to fit into church culture, into the family structure. They don't want to disappoint, you know, X, Y, Z. So they, they choose token wives. And the little woman is so, you know, desperate for a man that she looks over all of these flags that I'm getting ready to lay out for you. Maybe it's because nobody's ever taught her and she believes everything a man says and she believes a man is what he presents himself to be, right? Well, let me get in because I got a lot today. I got 11 and I got a short time to get there. I got about a half hour to get there. Number one, red flags. This dude, Maybe I may be dealing with a down low brother. Number one, you notice in some cases you notice a cross between what may be a down low brother versus a brother that may just be cheating. But there are some points that I'm going to make today that are specific to down low brothers. But number one, let's start off light: excessive secrecy. You know. Any man that says he loves you, but he's excessively secret. And, and, you know, when a man gets excessively secret, women begin to investigate. And so what, what you're looking for generally when a man becomes excessively secret is you're, you're looking for another woman. You're never looking for another man. And so what happens is, He's excessively secret. You can't find any trace of another woman. And the reality is it's not a woman. It's a man. 
But when a man, if your partner exhibits an unusually high level of secrecy about his personal life, particularly regarding his phone, social media accounts or activities outside the relationship, it could raise suspicions. Unexplained absences or frequent solo outings, just, you know, two, three times a week, you need, he needs some me time. It may be some he time. If you catch my drift, if your partner frequently disappears without a clear explanation or often engages in activities alone, alone, it may indicate some secretive behavior that probably points to something untoward. John chapter 3, verses 19 and 20 says, and this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. They don't want to live on top of the table. They don't want to live out front where you can see them. He says, everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved, challenged to change. So excessive secrecy, you got a man that's just excessively, he's wonderful when he's around, but he has a lot of secrets and you can't, you can't figure it out. You know, uh, number two, number two, number two, avoidance of public displays of affection. Now, any red-blooded heterosexual man. Now, in some cases, you have guys that may be so private or shy. Maybe he's a very public figure or what have you. But, you know, that's a rare occasion that you find a heterosexual man that has a problem with public displays of affection. Mm -mm. Very rare occasion. And especially not when the couple is exclusive and definitely not when they're married. You know, I ain't got no problem with no public display of affection with my wife. Any man that's always avoiding public displays of affection, he won't hold your hand. Something as simple as that. He won't, he won't kiss you. I'm not talking about, you know, the, the baby making kind of kiss, but he won't even kiss you on the lips in public. You do all, do all this stuff in private, but in public, come on now. See, when we used to run the game, you know, when player, 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 we could not have that much of a public display of affection with women we went out with because we never knew when we was going to run into another one. And so we had to always physically, body language wise, be in a posture where we could say, oh, she was just my friend or that was my cousin. We can't be around here with our arm around your waist. You know, we can't be around here staring in your eyes, kissing on you, letting you. No, 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 no. We got we got to keep the distance in public because I don't know when I'm going to run into somebody and it's going to mess the game up if I'm, you know, in a position where I'm having all of this public display of affection. Well, same thing with, with the down low brother. A man who consistently avoids or feels uncomfortable with public displays of affection, such as holding hands or kissing, might be concealing his true sexual orientation or fearing societal judgment or his judgment from his particular community. So, you know, you, if you got a man that, that, that's uh, apprehensive about public displays of affection, this is a conversation you got to have. 
You know, because your man supposed to... It, well, this here's my point. A masculine, heterosexual man, alphas always mark their territory. And so when a man is out in the street with a woman that he loves and um, that he loves and he's uh, proud of, he ain't got no problem with no public display of affection. If he's living right, now if, there, if there's a dead cat on the line, you're you going to all, now this stuff applies to, you know, heterosexual relationships as well. You know, even women that's running game with men, they're going to have a problem with public displays of affection because they don't know who they're going to run upon. Even much the more with some with a man that's that's down low. Number three. Now here we go. We're getting into some specifics here now. Number three, red flag that you may be dealing with a down low brother. He has an unusual interest in homophobic comments or behavior. He just oh he just hates. I hate homosexuals. I just can't. I hate homosexuals. He's not, he's not a guy that's like, well, I don't agree with it. I don't believe in it, you know, but hey, to each his own, let them do their thing, figure out, figure out life for themselves, let them meet God for themselves. He ain't coming from that position. Every day he just, you know, he's on this rant. I, I can't stand no homosexual. I can't stand no homo. Every time he see a homo, there's a homosexual, there's a homosexual. Why are you obsessed with, with homosexuals? Well, you know, he's covering up something. Every time I've seen in the church preachers that just went wow on the subject of homosexuality, when it all boiled down and the cover came off, they were homosexuals. And I mean, these people preached about homosexuality every time they touched a microphone, and then we find out they were homosexuals. This been gone, and I mean, I've been seeing this from when I was a kid. Preachers that are obsessed with preaching against or about homosexuality many times were homosexuals. Pay attention to your partner's strong negative reactions to homosexuality. It's a smokescreen. Excessive homophobic, homophobic remarks or an obsessive interest in other sexual orientations could be an indication that he is trying to steer you away from his own truth. It could be a defense mechanism to deflect suspicion. Matthew chapter 7 verses 1 through 5 says, judge not that ye be not judged, for with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged, and with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye? Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, let me pull out the mote out of thine eye, and behold, a beam is in thine own eye? Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the mote out of thy brother's eye. Now, there's a, there's a lot of teaching in there. And what you can learn from that verse is people that, people that are truly grounded in character and are authentic are self-judging. They're not spending most of their time trying to judge others. They don't have all of these condemnatory remarks constantly about others because they're too busy assessing their own character. I'm too busy trying to get the stuff out of my eye to be worrying about what you got over there in your eye. So when you see a man that's just, you know, he that's all he want to talk about, there's something in his eye that he's trying to distract or deflect you from noticing. This is just some game for you, you women, because y'all clearly need it. Y'all running around here with these boys talking about you got you a man, you got the Lord bless you and all this. And this boy is a whole homosexual, man. This man is not no, okay. Number four, mm -hmm. I'll move on. 
here's a good one right here. When there's a lack of interest in sexual intimacy. Let me just pause right there. When there's a lack of interest in sexual intimacy. When a decrease in sexual desire or performance can have various causes, it can, or why should I say a decrease in sexual desire can have various causes. A persistent lack of interest in sexual intimacy with a female partner may indicate an underlying issue related to sexual orientation. You know, like you think about this phenomenon today with boys in their 20s having to use the blue pill. Now, you know, dudes my age, you know, yeah, they, you know, they need that pill. Come on now. They'd be trying to talk all that old bad talking about I'm I'm the same today as I was when I was 25, 30. You are lying the truth, ain't you? You ain't. Ask your wife, she'll tell you. She may tell you the truth. You and your you know, 45, you really shouldn't be need no pill in your 40s, really. You get up past 50, you probably need a pill. But when you got boys out in their 20s and in their 30s and all through their 40s. Needing a blue pill to perform. What is that? That's a, a lot of times, that's, that's a homosexual man trying to fake a relationship with a woman. He has no real sexual desire for her. And, you know, when a, when a man doesn't have sexual desire, his, you know, his, his, bi his biology does not cooperate. And, a lack of sexual interest is, I think, when you're a young woman and dude has claimed that he's attracted to you, but he he he's he never seems to be interested in sex. He just wants to take pictures for Instagram, and he just want to go to the to the meetings, to the dinners, and go to church and do all of this stuff. But y'all getting to bed, he flipping over, going to sleep. Come on now. Something wrong. Now, now, a man, <clears throat> you know, a man that that doesn't want sex with a woman is is either suffering from erectile dysfunction, which usually happens later in life. You know, in his fifties, I think now this is starting in the forties and maybe even the thirties. They say sometimes he's physically sick. He's not feeling well. Uh, maybe he's on some medicine that's robbing him of his libido or his ability to function. Uh, he may not, you know, he may be a heterosexual man. Maybe he's just not attracted to you. You know, maybe he's not attracted to you anymore. That happens. Um, but it's also a possibility that you just got a, you got a gay guy that's trying to fake a relationship with you and he does not have a desire because his orientation is different. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 3 through 5, it says, uh, let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence. It's talking about sex here. And likewise also the wife unto the husband. The wife hath not power of her own body, but the husband and likewise also the husband hath not power of his own body, but the wife defraud ye not one the other, except it be with consent for time that ye may give yourselves to fasting and prayer and come together again that Satan tempt you not for your incontinency. Sex is supposed to be a regular occurrence in a healthy heterosexual marriage. And a man that you're married to that has no interest in you sexually that requires some massive counseling, massive conversation. And there are a lot of other reasons for these things occurring in marriage. You know, like when dudes have erectile dysfunction, they don't many times know how to say that to their women. We're embarrassed about stuff like that. 
And so that can be a situation. You don't, don't just automatically assume where well, your man is gay. No, he may be he may be struggling in that area, and he's embarrassed to say it. He doesn't know how to say it. He may feel like you're going to look at him differently. But what I am saying is, you as a woman, you got to have this conversation. Why are you not intimately attracted to me? Lisa was just having the people laughing on Instagram about how I chase her around the house. I'm a 59-year-old man, and I'm running her around the house because any heterosexual man that is attracted to his woman is going to show a sign that he's attracted to his woman. He's not going to be sexually lethargic. All right, number five. Okay, this this and this one kind of leads out of number four, but I think this one speaks, I think, really specifically to being a definite red flag that you're dealing with a down low brother. He prefers, he prefers, when he does have sex with you, he prefers a perverted version of sex. I pause because I want you to think about it. He he doesn't want the normal man on woman type sex. And I'm not going to go too far. I'm going to let you figure this out. He prefers a perverted version of it. You see, any man that's infatuated with every part of your body but the part where life is created is suspect. I'm going to drink some coffee and I want you to read between those lines. I'm going to drink some more. Any man that is infatuated with every part of your body, but the part where life is created is suspect. He want to do something with your ears. He want to do something with your toes. He want to do something with your nose. He want to do something with some other parts. But he don't want to deal too much with the part where the two become one, where life is created. He prefers a perverted version of sex with you. Romans 1, 26, 27 says, for this cause... God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise, verse 27 says, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. Sometimes a man's sexual proclivities within your relationship is an indication of where his heart is, what his orientation is. Now, I've said a lot without saying anything specific. I'm just trying to keep this child friendly, if y'all know what I mean. But you know what I'm, you, you catch my drift. He want to deal with every part but the part. Mm-hmm. All right. Number six. There are a lot of inconsistencies in explanations or stories. You know, he told you last night, that when he went, you know, to the drugstore, as he said he was going, it took him two hours because, you know, his mama called him and he had to go run to the grocery store for his mama and he had to bring it over to the house and then mama needed him to, needed him to change some light bulbs and mama needed X, Y, Z. Now today, you know, he the same man that told you he had to do all this for mama last night. Now he's telling you, I got to go by my mama's today. 
to do some things for you. You know, I haven't seen her in a week. Okay, I thought you said you went by your mama last night, and that's why you, 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 um, you know, was was so long. Oh, 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 oh. Well, you know, I did, but I didn't really see her because, you know, I was doing all that stuff for her, you know. But I got to go by the day to see her so I can really talk with her and, you know, and then, then somebody called and you can hear them in the, you know, in the phone, you know, the phone made now with people sitting on the other side of the car can hear. You can hear a dude on the other side saying, man, we had a good time last night, huh, bro? <laughs> and he don't even realize you listening to the whole conversation. That's game for you, brothers. Your woman can hear everything you saying on that phone. Everything you saying on that phone, bro. She can hear it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She hurt you. She hurt you. But there are inconsistencies in explanations and stories. Just always something different. I gotta go to the I got a meeting at the job, you know. Pastor wanna meet me at the church, which might be true. Sad to say. But if your partner frequently contradicts himself or provides inconsistent explanations about his whereabouts, his social circle, or his personal history, it may be cause for concern. You get a man that, that's not comfortable telling you who he is, where he come from, what he's done, what he's come through, where he's going. He's always avoiding that. On some level, he's running game. On some level, he's running game. There, there are too many inconsistencies. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 37 says, But let your communication be yea, yea, nay, nay, for whatever is more than these cometh of evil. In other words, a man that you can trust and submit to is a man uh, whose word is his bond. What he tells you, he's, he he tells you, he means what he says, and he says what he means. You know, he, he can tell you the same thing three weeks from now that he tells you today because he's speaking truth to you. He's a straight shooter. He's not out here making up all of these different stories. When a man is making up all of these different stories, he's either hiding a woman or a man. And I know you don't want, you know, you don't want to think of I can't. I don't even think about it. I don't want to think about it. You better think about it. You're going to sit up here and lose your whole life, uh, you know, on messing around with a fraud. Some old bogus relationship, so-called relationship, ain't nothing but a situation ship. Okay, here we go. I think I just got 10 today, actually. I, I numbered them wrong. But I got 10. Here's number seven. Now, this is a big one right here. I think I think this one really speaks to more than likely um, you're dealing with a down low brother. When there's a constant assault on your worth as a woman. This is where. He makes you feel like the worst woman to exist. You can't do nothing right. You don't look right. You don't dress right. You're too fat. You're too skinny. You didn't say that right. You messed up at the at the party. Your 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 your, your, your diction is not good. Your you know your your fragrance is not good. You shouldn't wear this, and you didn't eat right at the table. There's just this constant assault on your worth as a woman. This man breaks you down to nothing in terms of your self-esteem. That is not a heterosexual dude. I'm sorry. If it is, he's a sick one because it is the natural inclination of any heterosexual man to protect the heart of a feminine woman, even a masculine woman. A, hetero, a masculine heterosexual man is not going to intentionally hurt any woman. He will bend over backwards and dismiss himself before he engages in behavior that breaks the soul of a woman. When you see a man that can just constantly just chip away and chip away and chip away and chip away 
at your self-esteem and make you feel that small, you, in my opinion, you're dealing with a, 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 a gay man that, okay, can I say this? Uh, this is vagina envy manifesting. When a man can constantly and intentionally destroy your womanhood with his words and with his energy, it is vagina envy manifesting. Because he can't be you, he hates you. He only accepted you into his life because he needs something from you. He either needs your financing, he needs you for the photo ops, he just needs you to be a token. This is where he's competing, okay? Let me, let me just, I'm, I'm out in this water and I may as well go on with it. This is where you have a whole generation of men talking about they the prize. That ain't no masculine conversation right there. What? Man, I almost said something. Lord have mercy, that wouldn't have been preacher like. What man is going to be sitting here arguing that I'm the prize over a woman? Man, you ain't no prize. It ain't God ain't made nothing to compare to no woman, man. What is you talking about? God has not made anything to compare to no woman. I'm sorry. Now, am I a blessing? Am I a catch? You know what I mean? Am I, am I a king? Am I all of these? I am. But I ain't no prize. Any man around here arguing, trying to, trying to make himself the prize over a woman, that's some, that's some, that's some gay energy type stuff right there. No, yeah, because woman the prize, bro. Mm-mm. But it's a constant assault on the, the woman's sense of self-worth. And when you have a man that you're married to or you're in proximity with, he going to do everything he can to break you because he's jealous of you. Listen to what the Bible says in Colossians 3.19. Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. When you got a, when you got a straight heterosexual man, he's not going to be engaging in behavior that's going to break your soul. He's going to build you. Oh, I guess I got in trouble on that one. Good trouble, though. Good trouble. All right. Uh, number, I guess this would be eight. I think this, I think this really speaks to you probably dealing with a down little brother. He has an exaggerated relationship with the boys. It's not like a, it's not like a, I'm hanging out with the fellas type thing on the weekend. No, he has an exaggerated relationship with the boys. They on the phone all day. He's sitting on the phone for hours with his boys. You know, my boy. Yeah, my, my boy, my boy. Uh, I mean, I'm going to call. I mean, just holler at my boy. I'm going to go hang out with my boy. You trying to hang out with your boy every day? You got a whole woman at home and you trying to hang out with your boy? I got a, my, my best friend is my biological brother. The only brother I got. And I don't be trying to hang out with him when my wife around. Mm -mm. I want to be, I want to be close to them soft legs, man. I'm not trying to be running with no hard legs all day. But when you got when you got a, a little dude that's perpetrating, he has an exaggerated relationship with, with, with the boys. And, and in this situation, you have a man that wants to spend more time with his friends than he does his family. Another indicator is when he, his male friend seems to have a woman-like issue with you as his wife. It's almost like his male friends are, his male friend is jealous of you, competing with you, sizing you up like a woman would. You know, his male friend got an issue with you, you, you know, and he's standing for that. I, I just want y'all to get along. 
man, ain't no man going to be up in my life that can't get along with my wife. If you can't get along with my wife, my wife don't like you, you out. I don't even care if she was wrong. You out, bro. I'm rocking with my wife. It ain't no, it ain't no question about this situation here. Any man that got a, a, a dude in his life that's always having issues, fussing with his wife and all of that, and he's not dismissed this dude, suspect... Suspect, he always playing basketball, you know, and please don't get me wrong. Heterosexual men definitely play basketball. Come on now, please. But a lot of times that playing basketball stuff for some of these dudes is a cover up. And every day, you, you, you know, only other dudes that would, would hang out, be on the phone all day, every day. A dudes that's doing illegal business together. You know, they, they, they're selling dope or something together, you know. So they got to communicate all the time and they they got to be, you know. But apart from that, and if your man doing all that, you pretty much know what, you, 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 know, he, you know what kind of business he in. But if your man is supposed to be upstanding and legal in his earnings and what have you, and he just got a man that he on the phone with 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night, they just... You know, he got to go outside to talk to it. Come on, man. Mm -mm. And, you know, you grabbing the phone because you think it's a woman. It's just it's just Tyrone. It's just Tyrone. Yeah, Tyrone is his. Yeah, yeah. Better call Tyrone. Genesis uh, 2.24 says, Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife. Shall what? Cleave unto his wife. And they shall be one flesh. Uh, when a man is, is proper and in order, he want to hang out with his woman. He ain't trying to run down the street with all these, uh, uh, all these hard legs, man. Number nine. Um, his friends are effeminate dudes. They have, they have ladylike mannerisms. While your man may have, on the surface, masculine mannerisms, he got he got a bunch of boys that got a lot of feminine mannerism. And you just trying to overlook it because you just so happy to have you a semblance of a man, but it's highly unlikely that a masculine heterosexual man is going to be comfortable running the street with effeminate dudes. Now, let me also say this, just to be fair. You have some heterosexual guys that are effeminate. Guys, many times, that were raised by their mamas and their sisters and their aunties and their grandmas, and that's all they saw. A lot of times, these guys developed uh, effeminate mannerisms, you know, and it, it, it doesn't speak to their sexual orientation. In some cases, you know, I've seen I've seen some truly heterosexual guys that if you looked at them, they had very soft and effeminate kinds of um, you know, moves, you know. But generally, pure heterosexual guys are not always don't even put themselves in settings where they can learn that much about a man that is effeminate, that they would develop some close relationship, if I'm making sense. The two don't usually go together is what I'm saying. And when you see a man that, that's your man and he just got a bunch of effeminate guys around him, mm-mm, mm-mm. Amos 3 and 3 says, can two walk together except they be agreed? And then number 10, and finally, and I'm out of here, I've gotten into enough trouble. Uh, when a man is physically aggressive towards his woman, you know, like there's a lot of domestic abuse today because you are, you are locked up in these houses many times with dudes who are confused in terms of their sexuality and they hate you. Like, like Jacob hated Leah. The Bible says he hated her. Yet he kept making babies with her. Many times, dude is sleeping with you, married to you, but he hates you because you ain't you ain't really what he want. 
And so it comes out in him abusing you because he hates you. Whenever you start seeing a man becoming physically aggressive, a down low man is often filled with resentment and frustration because in his mind, he may wish to be you as the woman. And he feels trapped or he's angry because he'd rather you be his man. But society says you, he got to have a woman. This comes out in his language and sometimes in physical abuse, in rage. You start seeing a man getting aggressive with you for no real reason, which there's never a reason for a man to get aggressive because if, if, a, if a real man is irritated with you, he's just going to give you the gift of his absence. He will never get physical with you. It's, 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 a, it's an, it's an a, effeminate move when a man puts his hands on a woman. And then you sit there and you make all of these excuses for why he put his hands on you. Well, I don't do him wrong. Come on, man. You got you a whole homosexual you trying to tame and you don't even realize it. So there you have it. That's just my take on the matter. It's just my opinion. You ain't got to agree with it. I'm not asking you to agree with it. It's just, it's just my thoughts. I may not be right. I think I am. Take it or leave it. Let me pray. Father, I thank you for every person that's under the sound of my voice that's dealing with this very situation. Now, Father, my prayer is that you will, by your power supernaturally, give them wisdom, strategy, and God, give them the courage and the boldness to move forward with their lives. Thank you, dear God, for the grace of liberty and peace in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, maybe next time we'll go into, uh, depending on how you all respond to this message, maybe next time we'll go into how to dissolve a relationship with a down low man. Maybe we'll do that next time. Now, listen, don't forget to register for Queenology happening in 2024. I'm saying that because I think it's uh, January I think it's January 1 that prices are going to go up for Queenology in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, it's going to be an amazing time. It's a five-star event. You got to know that. And there are various packages from the Royal Court. That's the VIP experience to the, uh, the main thing, which is the, the Saturday intensive and brunch to the, 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 the all-white party with Dave Hollister singing She, our theme song. It's just going to be the pillow talk session with my wife, Lisa. It's happening August 23rd through 26, 2024 in Atlanta, Georgia. You can go to queenology.net and you can register now. In fact, there are uh, payment plans for whatever package you decide uh, to, to attain. And we'd love to see you in Atlanta. Do it before all of the seats run out. Do it before all of the seats run out. Now, um, what am I saying? Go to my website, rcblakes.com. Sign up for my mailing list. Check out all of my online programs while they are there. Um, go to Amazon, pick up all of my books. If you need counseling, look in the description and there's a link for better help counseling. If you use that link, it'll give you 10% off of the cost of their counseling. And they in turn will make a deposit into RC Blake's ministries. Thanks to all of you who have sown into our lives. Lisa and I love you with all of our hearts. I need you to like this to make certain that this message trends. Please like this. Please, please like. Yeah, y'all know what I mean. Like this message. Now, I love you with all of my heart. You're on top and you're going higher. God has more in store for you. 
And until next time, we will see you at the top. In fact, about it, you can pick this up uh, at rcblakesstore.com. Many of you have been asking about the shirts Lisa and I work out in. You can pick it up at rcblakesstore.com. The hoodie, the shirts, whatever it is you desire. It's at rcblakesstore.com. God bless you. Love you. Talk to you real soon. We here at R.C. Blake's Ministries want to thank you for spending this time with us today. R.C. and Lisa are always honored to have you with us. Don't forget to reach out to us by visiting our website at www.rcblakes.com. While you are there, you may join our mailing list and receive a free download of the Laws of Manifesting Your Vision by R.C. Blakes. Also look at all of the online programs by R.C. You may find all books written by R.C. and Lisa. Once again, all of us here at R.C. Blake's Ministries want to thank you from the bottom of our hearts. And as we always say, see you at the top.